Oh, that's probably something you never heard in church anywhere in your life. But you come to River of Life on March 3rd, and the preacher said, I got more suction than I got cord. You, t- you take in. Listen. <laughs> I knew I'd get in trouble, but I was going to say it anyway. You get too far away from God and you get unplugged, see? You get your suction too far away from the power source. You get too far away from the outlet. There's a picture in the bulletin. In fact, it's been in there for several weeks, and it's got the Word of God. You've seen that picture, and it tells you to get plugged into the power, and it's got a cord plugged in to the face of a Bible. And and who knew that in just a few weeks I would be preaching such a thing? But I think we're the same way. We get out too far away from God. We get out too far away from our prayer life. We get out too far away from praising God. We get too far away from our Christian friends and into the presence of our secular friends and the next thing you know we ain't acting like our Christian friends. We're acting like our fleshly secular friends. We're starting to think yeah it's okay to do what they do while I'm hanging out with them. You know what happened? You got too far away from the source of the power and you got unplugged. But listen to me you have come to the house of God today so that we can find the right outlet and get you plugged into the right power so that the suction will match the power. Oh, yeah. That's better preaching than you deserve. You ain't even paid your tithe in three years and you're getting that kind of preaching. You're a crook. You're a freeloader. You're a moocher. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit restricts and restrains what the devil can do. In your life, and not only in your life, but see, you got this cord that's connecting you to the power of God, and you can walk into even other people's situations where there is death and speak life. You can walk into other people's situations where the hands hang down because they've come, become weary and well-doing, and you can walk into that situation, and you can speak words of strength and words of wisdom because you're plugged into the power. See, it's not just about you. It's about other people. It's about the kingdom of God and your response. Responsibility. You listen to me, when you're plugged in, you can help somebody else get plugged in. You can tell them where the, the glory comes out. You can tell them where the glory comes down. You can tell them where the power is flowing. But don't go tell them that if it ain't flowing in you. And don't go tell them that if it's not coming down on you. And don't go tell them that if it ain't working in your life. You'll look around like I did last night. See, I didn't see the cord unplugged first. If I did, I'd have stopped a vacuuming. Because I'm smart enough, to, I'm not an electrician, but I do know this. When it comes, gets unplugged, it stops working. Oh, wait a minute. That'll preach too. When it gets unplugged, it'll stop working. Why in the world did I not bring a vacuum cleaner up here this morning? Listen, here's what happens. What happens to you is what happened to me last night. What happened to me in the physical was ha- happens to you in the spiritual. Every once in a while, rarely, but every once in a while, a person will look at the wall while they're vacuuming and saying, well, I've come too far. That's getting ready to come unplugged. And you know what they'll do? They'll stop, and they'll go over and either push it back in, or they'll say, maybe there's an outlet closer to where I am right now. And they'll go plug it in there. But 99 out of 100 times, their vacuum stop. And then they look and it's, oh, I'm unplugged. But there's a problem with that. You can't wait till you're unplugged spiritually. How many times have you heard it? I heard it this week. I was talking to somebody and I said, man, I would love to see you in church. Now, I didn't say it like that. I said, I'd love to see you in church. But, you know, for the dynamics of preaching, I would love to see you in church. God would love to see you in church. Jesus will take you back. It will help you in your life. And inevitably, what I've heard a hundred times in the past, I heard this week. You know, Pastor, I want to. But you know, when you get out of church, the next thing you know, you're just out of church. Once you're out one week, then all of a sudden you're out two weeks, and then you're out three weeks, 
And the next thing you know, six months has gone by, and you get up one day and realize, I haven't been to church in six months. You know what happened? They got unplugged. But the problem was they came unplugged. They didn't realize they were unplugged until the power had gone out. They didn't realize they had come unplugged until the fire went out. They didn't realize they were unplugged until they looked up and the devil was standing a lot closer than he had ever been. And he was working a lot more feverishly than he had ever been. Listen to me today. You cannot do God's work without God's power. Too many people have tried it. And there are preachers that rise in stature, and the next thing you know, they're driving a bigger car, they're in a bigger sanctuary. Some of them even get jet planes, and they begin to rely less on God and more on their charisma and more on their talent and more on their ability and more on what their fans are saying about them than what God is saying to them. And the next thing you know, they fall. The next thing you know, there's immorality. The next thing you know, there's unethical behavior because the power goes out before they realize they've gotten too far away from the source of power and they become unconnected to God and more connected to their desire for success. They are not connected with God but they are more connected with popularity and and finance and, and these types of things and all of a sudden they realize I can no longer do God's work because I no longer have God's power. What a sad sorry state to find yourself in as a child of God to get up one day and realize you're trying to do it all by yourself. You're trying to do it all on your own. Listen to me. The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It does not say you can do all things through what you learned in Bible study 20 years ago. You can do all things through what you remember mama telling you when you was a little boy. No. You have got to have the power on the inside of you working towards the outside of you. Now listen to me. I know I'm out of time and i got about another hour to preach. But we can go back to John chapter 14. In verse 15, the Bible says this. These are red letters. These are the words of Jesus. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now listen. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells within you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. See, you know what the best day of your life was? The best day of your life was when Jesus came to this earth. You know what the next best day of your life was? The day he left. Now, how many times have you felt that about somebody that's visited your home? I loved it when they got here, and the only thing I loved more than when they got here was when they left. That's the way I feel about Jesus. You can sit there and look at me like that if you want to, but if he had stayed here dead and in the grave, I wouldn't be standing here right now. If if he had not come, he wouldn't have died for me. But if he hadn't come back out of the grave and ascended to the Father and sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat, he says right here, it's expedient. We read it in the text. It is best for you that I go to the Father because if I go to the Father then I'm going to send Him the helper, the comforter, the power the presence of God that's going to live on the outside of you. Here it comes Jesus was working on the outside Jesus was working from the outside in. It's the Holy Ghost that works from the inside out. Look at your neighbor and tell him you need to work out. (laughs) Not at the gym with Him. Now tell him that not the gym but Him. You need to work out. As God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross, it was Jesus working from the outside in saying, listen to my words, listen to my commandments, do what I tell you to do. This is what the Father is like. This is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to die on the cross. I'm going to be placed in the grave, destroy this temple, and three days later, I'll raise it again. This same Jesus that you see ascending to the Father today. You'll see descending in like manner one day when He comes back with His angels to receive His church and to Himself. The Bible tells us all about Jesus Christ working from the outside in. But when He got to the Father, He sent the power of the Holy Ghost to work from the inside out so that you could be plugged into the power, so that you could be connected in the power. So that the things that are working on the outside will never be greater 
than the things working on the inside. That's why the Bible says, no, now it makes sense. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When I was in high school, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was not a smart man. I was educated in West Virginia. You graduate in sixth grade over there. You get you a, a Jethro Bodine degree. Don't you be talking about West Virginia. I remember being in high school and going to science class and the science teacher saying, you know, if you take an egg and you put it in the palms of your hand and you squeeze your hands together as hard as you possibly can, that egg will not crack. It will not break. And I thought, what a story. What a lie. Everybody knows how fragile an egg is. Even a hard-boiled egg, you couldn't do that. And guess what I did as soon as I got home? I went in the kitchen, opened up the refrigerator, got an egg, and stuck it right in the center of my hand. And I began to squeeze. And there I was, a star football player on a good football team, a, a fantastic wrestler in the 145-pound weight class, a letterman for three, all three years in high school, and with all the strength in my body, I could not crack that egg because of the scientific principle at work, which I don't have time to explain to you, but I will explain it spiritually. We are pressed, but not crushed. We are, we are persecuted, but not abandoned. We, we, listen, this world can't strike you down. This world can't make you a son of Sceva and beat you up and tear your clothes off and send you down the road if the power of God is working on the inside of you. I'm telling you today, I have found the source of power. I have found where I can be connected to a force and a power that is far greater than me, that no matter how many hands are pressing upon me in this world, no matter, no matter how many works of the enemy or the devil are coming against me, I will not be crushed, I will not be broken, I will not back down, I will not retreat, I will not surrender, because I have come to the conclusion that God is who He says He is, and God can do what He says He can do, and that God's Word is true. Listen to me. Faith is is the language of a person who has read the Word of God and says, you know what, I believe it, and it is settled forever and ever and ever that greater is He that is in me than he that is in this world, and I have the power to overcome. If you believe it, say amen. Listen to me. Let me, let me say this as Brother Mike comes. I haven't even got to the points. I guess you'll get it Wednesday evening if you're here. I like this cartoon. How many of you read it? Say amen. And for all of you that never attend our Wednesday evening service, we are renaming it the, quote, midweek, maybe I'll go to church if I feel like it and don't have anything else better to do service. But I'll finish this Wednesday. The devil is not afraid of an unsaved person. Why would he be? He's not afraid of an unsaved person. He has nothing to fear from the unsaved. They barely even know he exists. Some of them might. Most of them are in some kind of state of denial about whether he exists or not because if they really believed he existed and knew who he really was and what he really had in store for them, they'd kick the door into the church to get saved. But the fact remains, the devil does not fear unsaved people but I will tell you something else you probably didn't know he's not afraid of saved people churches are full of saved people I said it last week a church full of saved people is just a bunch of people going to heaven just a bunch of vacuum cleaners that lost their suction because they got too far from the power Man, that's incredible for you to hear that for the first time in your life the devil's not afraid of unsaved people and the devil's not afraid of saved people the devil fears people full of the Holy Ghost. The devil fears a spirit-filled, anointed, praying, praising, 
in the presence of God, child of God, who is plugged into His power, who not is simply walking through life relying on something they thought they got 20 years ago when they got saved and say, well, greater is He that is in me than He is in the world. And then you look around, He ain't in you no more. Because you stopped praying and you stopped praising and you stopped being in God's presence. Now, that ought to help you understand why church is so important because some of you don't ever even pray until you're in church. And that's because somebody says, let's pray. You don't sing to God throughout the week until Mike gets up here and says, I wish you'd stand up. I wish somebody would sing. I wish somebody would raise their hand. I wish somebody would worship the Lord. And the preacher gets up here and says, I wish somebody would read their Bible. I wish you knew what the Word of God said. I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. This is what the Word of God says about you. This is what the Word of God says about the devil. What it says about the world. What it says about your money. What it says about your job. What it says about your marriage. And the reason that stuff doesn't resonate with you is we see your cord laying in the floor where it used to be plugged into the wall. Where it used to be plugged in to the power. I want to tell you today, hell fears God anointed, God powered, spirit filled, prayer powered children of God. That's what he fears. Wonder right now, just think for a moment. Does he fear you? Does the de- is the devil afraid of you? Or are you afraid of the devil? I don't go for this mutual respect stuff. I don't go for this, we're going to agree to disagree. I don't agree to disagree with the devil. In fact, I'm going to make him real mad. I want our praise team and musicians to come back up here very quick. Run! Run like your clothes are on fire. I want y'all, I just, I feel that song resonating over and over in me again. Y'all sang that last song. I guess that's the first time y'all ever sung that. And I just want you to, I want you to sing that. And I want you to stand with me. Stand with me all over this church. I'm going to pray for some people this morning. I'm going to pray for some people that want some power. Now, you're not going to hear me tell you I got something to impart to you that my hand needs to be on you. This, this is not something I have. But I know how to get what you need. I know how to get what you want. I know how to pray for you. And I know how to pray with you. If you really want to get plugged back into the power, it's been too long. You've struggled too much. You've grown too weary. It's gotten too hard. It's because the power is not connected. The power, the reservoir is empty. But listen to me. You are in the house of God today. You are closer to the power right now than you have been all week. 